the work that CASA does in our community. We're the agency that recruits and trains lay volunteers to act as the consistent caring adult for children who've been removed from their homes due to abuse and neglect. I'm sure you've all seen the stories on the news. This is a problem in our community that is growing exponentially and faster than it is anywhere else in the country. The children that our agency represents all live in Jackson County in the urban core or in Eastern Jack. They come to us because their parents or their caregivers were unable to care for them safely. That means our children come to us because they've been sexually abused, because they've been beaten, because they've been burnt, because they've locked in closets, because they've been left outside without shoes and clothes. You all see the stories. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Nearly all of the families we help are indigent. I've been at CASA for six years. I have to tell you, I don't think I've yet seen a middle class family come into our system. And more than 70% of the children that we serve here in Jackson County are minorities. When children are taken away from their biological parents and brought into the system, what matters to them most is to be able to live with family. For the siblings to be able to stay together, sometimes children who've been abused and neglected, their siblings are the only safe people they've ever known. The problem in our system is that there is money to pay for foster care. Not very much, I don't want to kid you, not very much at all, but there is some money to pay for foster care subsidies and there is almost no money to help relatives who stand up and say they'll take care of children. And the truth is that in our community, by and large, poor people are related to poor people. That's how it works. And so if children are removed from their parents and there's an aunt or an uncle or a grandma or a great grandma who can safely care for the children while we look for an adoptive home for them, there's no money to support that effort. The number one thing that our agency worries about is beds. In our state, Children's Division will not place children in a family or in a home if every child does not have their own bed, and it has to be age appropriate. So those of you who have kids or have siblings, you know that means crib for the little ones, it means a toddler bed with railings up until about age four, and then it means twin beds for the older kids. And often in our case, it means bunk beds. Anybody want to guess why we care about bunk beds? Because they're neat and cool? Did you get them at Ikea? Try it, somebody. Got an idea? It's because the families we work with are very, very poor, and they have very, very little space, and very few bedrooms, and if you need to put four kids in a small bedroom on the south side of town, you've got to have bunk beds or you can't do it. What we're requesting is about $19,000 to help us buy 60 beds, 55 cribs, sheets, blankets, and pillows, and the support for that for the coming year. In the past three weeks, we've accepted assignment to four families where there weren't beds to place the children, and those kids went into foster care instead of going home with their grandma. And that's a crying shame. It means that their trauma is compounded, and the opportunity to reunite them with family just takes longer. So I'll tell you the cool thing about CASA. Because we have lay volunteers who are paired individually with every sibling group, we have the volunteer help to understand what the bed needs are for that family. They've been in the home, they see what's needed. And to go make the purchase, make the delivery, put the sheets on the bed, set up the bunk bed, make sure it's all set. We're the only agency that I know of that has dedicated volunteers for every single family to get that work done. What we don't have is the money to buy the beds. And that's why we're coming to you. So I'm going to answer in advance the number one question I know you guys are going to ask. You can tell me later if I guessed right. You all are going to ask me why we don't go to sleepyhead beds, aren't you? How many of you are thinking that? Yeah, some of you? Big agency in town, high profile, very interested in helping provide beds for low-income families for foster kids. We had six kids come into care two weeks ago, a family of six kids. They were removed from their home because of their mother's drug abuse. She was unable to properly parent them. There was serious uh, sexual abuse from one of her boyfriends. And we had a grandma and an aunt who were willing to take them. Grandma said she'd take the three little ones. Aunt said she could take the older ones. They needed beds. We had to find beds within 24 hours or Children's Division was going to put those kids in foster care. That's how long we had. We call Sleepyhead Beds because they're the big provider in Kansas City. They've helped us so many times before. It was actually started by a former CASA volunteer. 
They have a thousand families on the wait list. They couldn't help us for six months. Those kids were going to go into foster care in 24 hours if we didn't find beds. So we don't have money to buy beds. We did the next best thing. We put it up on Facebook. We asked for help. We got donations for beds for the older kids. We got some Walmart gift cards. We got a mattress here, a bed frame there, and a Rollinger drove all over town, put them together. We got the older kids situated. We didn't get the cribs for the younger kids, and they went into foster care. That's not a situation that's tolerable, and you all can help us fix that. With your money and our volunteer time, we can be sure that every child who has a family member who can care for them is taken care of that way and doesn't have to go into our foster care system. Can I answer questions? Yeah. <clears throat> You're asking for 60 beds and 55 cribs? Yeah. How'd you come up with that number and then how much of our 19,000 would take care of That's that? That's a really good question. So um, about half the money will go directly for beds and cribs. Another quarter will go for the bedding, sheets, pillows, blankets. It turns out we figured out a while ago that you need those things. Um, and the rest of the money will go for staff support. Um, as the Galvin Lazarus Ministries was just explaining, this stuff doesn't happen by magic. It actually takes real people. And I've asked my staff to work for free, but darn it, they don't insist on eating. I just haven't been able to talk them out of it. Um, we came up with that number because that's how many beds we were unable to take care of in 2015. So um, next year, we expect our caseload to grow. CASA this year is actually going to take care of 1,056 children in our community. That's only a third of the kids who've been brought into care due to abuse and neglect, and we're growing as fast as we can to meet that need. I expect to take 1,200 kids next year. So we'll need, we'll need more than that next year, but there's still Facebook. Yeah. Do you, I live in a large building and we have a donation area, and every now and then there are likely used mattresses that are there, and there are a lot of organizations that won't come into a building to pick up things. Um, do you guys have the capability of coming in? Call me, okay. absolutely. Right. So I will tell you, used mattresses are problematic depending what part of town they come from. Yeah. So there is nothing you can do worse to a poor family than put a mattress with bed bugs in their home, okay. right? If you do that, you have caused a problem that will cost thousands of dollars to correct and then nobody wants to fix. But if they come from a reputable place, and usually we can treat them, you know, if you yeah. know coming in, um, oh, absolutely. If you have donations, call me. Um, storage is hard for agencies like ours, and we don't have a warehouse. We don't have a big inventory area, but I've got good volunteers, and they'll help. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Thank you very much.